Hey everyone, my name's Silver. Welcome back to my channel. So guys, today I wanted to do some of my favorite cards that are being released in, in set 12, Dragon's Awakening. As you can see all the way over here, right here, right there. Dragon King's Awakening, as it's called. So we're gonna go from right to left today. And we're gonna start off with Chrono Tiger Gear Glare. So it's got its GG like Chrono Jet. Um, I like the artwork overall. Um, it's Chrono Fang's new or Chrono Tiger Fang Chrono Fang Tiger's new stride. And its skill is Soul Blast One. Choose a card face down from your G zone with the same name as this unit. Turn it face up. If you have a Gear Beast Heart card, choose any number of your opponent's triggers with some of their grades being less than or equal to the number of cards in your bind zone and your opponent puts them to the bottom of his or her deck in any order. Then it has Generation Break 3. If the if the number of cards in your bind zone is 5 or more, this unit gets 10k. Then if it's 7 or more, it gets 1 critical. Then if it's 9 or more, it gets 1 drive check. So this is an <coughs> so this is a nice unit to use during the middle of the fight. You don't think you're going to be able to get up to your 12 units in your bind zone so use this and this will give you an additional 10k which puts you at 36 a critical which applies pressure and a drive check to apply even more pressure overall this is a nice card it's going to be nice and to see in gear decks i'm assuming most people are going to only run it at two <coughs> but uh only time will tell all right moving on to the shadow pounding and by the way all these cards are in the order i'm excited to see them um, more or less, I'm just excited to see all of them, so I don't really have an order. So, we're moving on to the G-Guard <coughs> for Shadow Paladin. And I can't remember its name. It's, uh, <coughs> um, wait, it's Dragweiser Brushing. And its skill is, when this is placed on Guard Circle, reveal the... Reveal five cards from the top of your deck. Call all grade ones from among them to rear guard. Put the rest at the bottom of any order. So why is this card good? Well, it could definitely be <coughs> your last minute um, savior, especially if you're running older PGs or perfect guards that um, when it's placed on guard circle, drop a card. So say you have two cards left in hand. One's a heal and one's just a random card. You could throw this down hope you get the pg get the pg and perfect guard it yes it might seem like a waste of resources but at least um you're getting some protection out um i'm expecting to see most uh luard decks to run at least one to two of her if not more but honestly i don't see a lot of room uh you maybe one you wouldn't really want to replace plot maker. Um, the artwork I wish was like this. <coughs> All right, sorry about that, guys. <coughs> so I guess we're just gonna sort of continue with this. Try to buzz through it as quickly as possible. So moving on, we have remaining moon Hato Hizuri, which this is one. This is one subsection. I'm really hoping they expand on more than just these two cards, but it is Sukiyomi support. Uh, or not Tsukiyomi. Uh, yeah, Tsukiyomi. Um, when this card is discharged from hand for the cost of stride, you, if you have a card with Tsukiyomi in its name on your vanguard, or in soul, draw a card, choose one of your noble units until end of turn gets 5k power, and auto vanguard slash rear. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, choose a great card from your drop zone and return to hand. So what she does is provide infinite stride fodder. That's as simple as what she does. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see this card. Because <coughs> you can always bounce her back to hand at the end of turn. And this is going to be a vanguard slash rearguard skill. So it's going to be really good. Then moving on to the grade 2 counterpart, Dawning Moon. So, uh, Soul Blast 1, once per turn, act. If you have a grade 3 or greater... Vanguard with Tsukuyomi in its name, look at the top card of your deck, put it to the top or bottom of the deck, and this unit gets 2k until end of turn. This card, this card, if you have a God Hockey Shibiyoshi on your Vanguard, search your deck for Goddess of the Crescent Moon, write it as Stand Shuffle deck. So, if you don't get your, you know, 
if you don't know, understand how the whole Tsukiyomi line works, Do Godhawk goes into Crescent, Crescent goes into Half, Half goes into Full, and then you go into Stride. What makes this card good is if you don't get, if you don't have a Crescent in hand, and you don't uh, get it on your Search Five, this automatically allows you to get it as soon as the Act phase is during your Act phase, which makes her infinitely better and makes the deck more stable and I'm hoping to see Tsukuyomi support pour out in the future. We'll move on to the Narukami card that I'm actually really excited for because it's sort of mixing both of both clans. Stealth Beast, I can't say the rest because I'm bad and I'm sick so I'm not going to attempt it. Uh, when this unit is placed on van or rear, bind the top up to one card from the top of your deck. Only the owner of the face down bounding cards may look at them. Generation break one, counter plus one. When this is when a dominant unit attacks, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose a card from your bind zone, put it to hand, and if you do, this unit gets 10k. So what I like about this is it's giving the deck pressure. You're able to filter out cards you don't want for cards you want. For buy for dominating. Which really, in my opinion, goes over with the whole theme and makes it beautiful. Moving on to the Nurikami stuff, we have the new Dragonic Vanquisher Sparking, which I really like. So start off with its stride skill, Counter Blast 1. <coughs> when your junior unit strides, you may pay the cost. If you do, your opponent chooses a card from his or her drop zone and binds it face up. Then if the then if your G unit stride has the Thunderstrike ability, your opponent chooses one of her his or her rear guards and binds it face up as well. So that's good because now you're not only targeting the drop zone, but you're targeting the field for both things, and it just is amazing. And then it has Thunderstrike 4. At the beginning of your ride phase, Counter Charge and Soul Charge 1, your opponent chooses a card from his or her drop zone and binds it. So this isn't a act or anything. You have to do this every turn, so if you forget, you have to stop whatever you're doing to do it. But it is really good overall. It forces your opponent to, again, the deck can probably build up a lot of Thunderstrike momentum really quickly, so you can do this, which I'm really excited for. And the G unit to go with it, I'm even more excited for. Conquering Supreme Dragon Dragonic Vanquisher V Buster. That's a mouthful. And it works nice as a first stride. Act, count, act once per turn. Soul Blast, choose a card. From your G-Zone with the same name as this unit, turn it face up. Your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and one card from his or her drop zone binds them face up. If the number of your rear guards is greater than the number of your opponents, choose up to three of your units to give them 3k. Generation Break 3, Thunder Strike 7. All your units in the front row get plus 5k and this unit gets one critical and one drive. So in this set I realize that a lot of cards are getting an additional drive which I'm really okay with. But this card is really nice and flows really well with its overall theme. The card art is nice and I just like the card overall. And last but not least is my favorite unit thus far. And it's one I theorized and I stuck to my guns to. And I am happy I did so. Ladies and gentlemen, Evil Eye, Hades Emperor, Shuriken Mukiruro. I cannot say that. He is an Abyss Dragon from the Dragon Empire. Nubatama's new Grade 4 Ace. Dominate. Act once per turn GB2. Soul Blast 2. Choose a card from your G Zone. Choose a face down card from your G Zone. Turn it face up. Choose a card from hand. Discard it. Dominate all of your opponent's vanguards as stand and they attack. Each of those vanguard battles, all your each of those vanguard battles all of your opponents rear guards during the bat that battle you will drive check with your deck and pay the cost using abilities as well so <clears throat> what's this doing is is allowing you to just infinitely be more powerful so let me explain if they do this and i have yet to see a card <coughs> a rear guard that actually dominates but if we get an amber clone that dominates a rear guard so you stride you activate still you dominate you attack the vanguard you you just do that you wear out your opponent's hand and then in the middle of your main phase you just dominate the vanguard you attack all five of your opponent's rear guards probably par 
pinnacle to his defense, and you get an additional two drive checks off that. <coughs> so it's just as oh, one, two, critical, critical, all effects to Vanguard. Vanguard attacks, three more drive checks. If they don't have a PG, this card is going to become very powerful to them, and I don't know if I like it, but I do love it. And I can't wait to see what this happens. I'm hoping this card's somewhat affordable or it's just going to destroy the market. But guys, that is the updates I wanted to share with set 12. I know there's a lot of cards in here and I plan on maybe seeing if Black Moon wants to do a video with me where we cover all the cards once all the cards are out in sort of chunks and go from there but for now i'm pretty happy if you want to see it i will leave the link in the description below until next time guys i've been the silver wolf and i will see you all later peace